Hey guys, today I'm going to show you the different varieties of quail I have, explain the differences between them, and dispel some myths. The first thing I'm going to say is that all the birds I'm going to show you are all just different color variations of the same bird, which is the Japanese Caternix quail. question that I hear a lot um, is, you know, which, which uh, of these birds has the best capability for laying eggs, the, producing the best and the most meat, which bird gets the biggest, yada, yada, yada. And it, it's a valid question. It's a legitimate question. Some people just don't know, and I, I don't put anybody down that, that's wondering that. Um, but there are a lot of people out there that will go and tell people that, oh, Tibetans are the best, or Browns are the best, or, or whatever. And uh, the reality of it is that it all is dependent on the specific bird's genetics, and it's not tied to a feather color. It, it's kind of like, you know, someone asking what's the best type of duck hunting dog, uh, a black lab, a yellow lab, or a chocolate lab. And, you know, it's a very, very... Uh, broad question there, and it really isn't, it doesn't make sense, you know, which, which it's perfectly fine if somebody doesn't know, um, but the people that are out there saying, yeah, you know, the yellow lab's a better duck dog because of this than the, than the chocolate or the black, and, you know, it's just, the, it's the people that are trying to make that argument that uh, I, I find it to be a little bit silly. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter what the color of the animal is, the specific trait comes down to that bird's uh, specific genetics and what the genetics of the parents were and what line it came from. Um, this uh, variety is the most common one. Uh, it's commonly called just the brown or the pharaoh is the other name it's called. And the other name that I hate when they're called is the jumbo brown. And people out there selling chicks or selling birds call them jumbo browns. And make people think that this is the largest variety or you're going to be getting a bigger bird. Um, some of the smallest birds I've got have been browns. They're just the most common so you get the most variety. Uh, they're, they're not any, any bigger generally than, than any other variety. Um, people out there that are calling them jumbo browns, I'd like to know who the authority is that decides when a brown quail um, is technically considered a jumbo and what gave them that authority to make that determination. It's, it's just silly. Um, so it, and and it's, it's fine people call it that, just don't get caught into a marketing ploy and thinking that these birds are, are bigger than other birds or the biggest and best you can get. Um, it, it's just not, it, it's not uh, the reality of things. Um, one thing I will say about this variety is they are very easy to, to tell the gender between. Uh, I don't have any roosters in here right now to explain to you the difference, but you can see the speckling on their chest there, the, the black uh, speckles, dots on their chest, those are all hens. The roosters have a solid color on their chest. It's a, a rusty red to orange color, and it's all one solid color. If you look up a picture on Google, it, it, you'll tell right away. You can see how easy it is to tell the difference between roosters and, and hens and those guys. I can hear all of you right now. Those are Texas A&M quail, Texas A&Ms. About to dispel another myth. Uh, the Texas A&M quail is just a specific line of English or English white um, Caternix quail, which is what these are, that was specifically bred at Texas A&M University, a program. They did their breeding program trying to find a, to, to breed a large white bird as a meat bird. And they wanted it to be white because when you pluck it, they make a nice clean looking carcass. And then they just specifically targeted the biggest birds to reproduce so that they get the biggest white birds that they could. Most people out there saying they have Texas A&M quail don't have Texas A&M quail. They do not have birds from that specific line. They're just um, typically called that. It's just a, it's just a misnomer. Um, people that have actual true Texas A&M quail will be able to tell you the line they came from, the lineage, and everybody that has had the the birds before them and where they can trace them back all the way to that breeding program in Texas A&M University. Uh, again, it is not tied to a feather color, the size or um, egg production or anything else. That is all just, uh, you, 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 can, you can specifically breed your own birds to do just as good or better than the birds that originally came out of the Texas A&M breeding program. It's just all done through selective breeding. So don't uh, don't get too caught up and worried about having to have Texas A&M quail and, and even if you have somebody that claims they are true Texas A&Ms 
it, it to me it's not that big of a deal you're just looking for the largest birds you possibly can and unless you have something you want it for the nostalgia factor to say you actually have true texas a&m quail if you want to do that knock yourself out i don't i don't i don't fault you for doing that but just understand again that uh things uh the genetics for size egg production uh, and such are not tied to a feather color please keep that in mind These ones are the Tibetan variety. They are a bit darker bird. These ones actually are a cross between a pharaoh and a Tibetan, most of them. There's a couple there that are a bit darker and closer to the true Tibetan color. But it kind of gives you an idea that their um, color patterns are different, especially on their chest. And um, the rest of their bodies are dark. They, they, just like the English whites, I forgot to mention this about them, are not capable of being distinguished between hen and rooster definitively by feather color. Obviously the English whites you can't because they're all white. There's no distinguishing marks on them. And these guys, uh, I've heard people claim that the roosters have darker heads or hens have different color pattern on their chests and everything I've been told by people and, and seen on Online, I've always found an exception to the rule with with my birds and found that that doesn't uh, hardly ever pan out uh, So these like the whites are difficult to tell the difference between hens and roosters. So keep that in mind if you're considering uh, um, Getting them. They are a cool bird though um, They're they're a pretty bird they um, th These ones are, are a bit smaller than the rest of my birds. They are the smallest ones I have, but again, I, that is not tied to a feather color. That is just the genetics of the person I got my Tibetans from. Just did not have uh, the genetics of larger birds in the, the breeders that I got my, my chicks from. I know I'm, I'm hitting that a lot, but, but make sure you remember that it is not tied to a feather color. You need to remember that when you're selecting your birds. Don't get uh, caught up on the feather color unless you just want them, you know, for nostalgic reasons, which is, is perfectly fine as well. These ones are one of my favorites. These are the Italian variety. Uh, they're just like the, the brown or ferro, but they obviously have the, the white uh, on them instead of the, the brown. They're a, a white background kind of version of the, of the ferro. They're distinguishable by their um, feather colors, just like the ferros are. Uh, these are all hens, and when you do have the roosters, that orangish or a reddish color really stands out and it's a lot easier to tell roosters with these guys too because they do have a darker head i'm sticking my hand in there trying to get them sh shooed back this way a little bit so you guys can see them in the camera but they're they're a lot prettier on the roosters that that pattern really or that solid color stands out on the chest and their head um that is darker and that is more pronounced the pharaohs are that way too but since they're already a brown bird a darker bird that dark head isn't as pronounced. It's much more pronounced on, on the Italians. If I if I could only ever have uh, one kind of bird ever with these Caternix quail, it'd be these. I, I really love these birds. Really good looking bird, distinguishable by their feather color. And these particular ones I have are are good sized birds as well. So these these are some of my favorites. I really I really like these birds. And just to kind of show you something cool here at the end, these are my silver birds. They came from the Schofield line of silver Caternix quail. I don't really care that they came from that line. Everybody seems to um, think you've got to have Schofield birds. They take great pride in having a Schofield line of Caternix quail, which I don't really care where they came from. I just think they were cool looking birds if they're silver. These guys came from a set of breeding cages that had, you know, different phases of, of silver birds breeding with other color varieties and so I got a big mix of different birds so none are a one set uh, phase of, of silver color. They can be silver, gray, platinum, there's all sorts of stages and phases. Um, the Caternix Quail Breeders of America page on Facebook is a good resource for that if you want to know the differences. And, and there are many more beyond silver too. There's, there's all sorts of different other colors and patterns and things that you can get and they'll tell you how to breed different types to get different um, cool looking patterns. and and things um, but don't don't get caught up on these for any other reason other than feather color for a nostalgic reason which is why I have mine there's a cool looking bird but just like all the other ones they don't have anything special about them that makes them produce bigger bigger birds have better meat birds or lay better or anything else They're just kind of a cool bird and I thought I'd uh, show you guys that there at the end to, to finish up
and that's it guys um, and just one more time I know this this horse has been dead for days and it's rotten and stinking and I'm still swinging but just don't don't forget that there is not a correlation between feather color and traits like egg production and size of the bird. If you want to determine what the best birds are to get, go look at the bird you're looking at getting, find them on Craigslist or wherever you're gonna find them. And you wanna physically handle the birds, touch them, feel them, put your hands around them if they'll let you handle them and feel which birds are the biggest if they're gonna let you select your own birds. If you're getting chicks, look at the parents and ask to handle them too. If you get your hands on and can actually, you know, put your hands around a bird, you'll be able to tell the difference a lot easier because sometimes they ruffle their feathers, they fluff up and look bigger or smaller than they really are depending on, you know, the situation. So make sure you, if you can, you get your hands around them and handle them. Even if you're just getting chicks, you want to do that with the adults. So um, keep that in mind and thank you guys again for watching my channel. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, leave any comments you have or questions you have on the channel and if you have anything, you know, detail or specific you want to, to ask me or let me know, email me at jaren at urbanaviary.com. That's J-A-R-E-N at urbanaviary.com and I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks again for watching.